Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, clinical trials are research studies that are designed to explore if a treatment or a device is safe and effective for humans. Clinical trials do follow strict standards to produce reliable Clinical trials do follow strict standards to produce reliable results, and that often requires that patients receive more tests, more exams than they would during a standard course of treatment. A clinical trial may show improved patient outcomes, but it can also show no benefit or even sometimes unexpected harm. All of these results are important because they advance medical knowledge and help improve patient care. Here to discuss clinical trials is Tony Manscow. Tony is the Clinical Trials Referral Coordinator here at Mayo Clinic. Welcome to the program, Tony. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate the opportunity. Tony, interesting name. It, you would never know for sure that it's Manscow, but you said you were of, uh, you are from where? The name um, is from where? Yeah, it's a tough Norwegian name. Yeah. You find it every now and then in the Midwest. When there are a lot of tough Norwegians around and, the, mi- yes. the Midwest. It's great to have you on the program. Thank you. So uh, when you sit down with, with patients, as I know you do every day, how do you explain to them w- what a clinical trial really is? Sure. So we talk with probably a little over 5,000 people that contact the cancer center at Mayo Clinic. Um, Mayo Clinic as a whole, we have about 13,000 studies underway. So lots of research for many different different diseases. Um, So basically, clinical trials is something that someone is going to volunteer to participate. But for cancer, um, one of the things that comes into play is that the best time to contact someplace for clinical trial information is when you're newly diagnosed. Um, Your slate is clean, you haven't had any prior treatment, Mm -hmm. and there may be more clinical trial opportunities for someone to participate in. So really it's talking with someone so that they know what all their options are, and clinical trials is something to have on the table. Are most clinical trials cancer related? Um, No, not necessarily. There just happens to be a lot in cancer research, but the beauty of clinical trials or clinical research where it involves all types of research are that what's learned about one disease overflows and is benefiting many other diseases. And a perfect example is um, the diabetes drug metformin. Um, It's very well known in the medical community and we are currently studying that in the cancer community as a cancer prevention, but it's also being studied as a cancer treatment. And at Mayo, we're also studying it to see if it can prevent migraine headaches. So it's a lot of repurposing of medications and a lot of um, very fascinating research that's underway. I think it's also important to point out to to patients who are potential candidates for a clinical trial is that there is some pretty good evidence already that the uh, medication or device that you are going to be uh, using has shown some effectiveness in in what you have. Yeah, so typically most medications or treatments are studied for about six or seven years in a laboratory before they're brought into clinical trials with people. And it goes through certain phases. So um, it's about seven to eight years of um, being in a clinical trial uh, going through the phases before something's approved by the FDA or the Food and Drug Administration. So there's a lot of time that's spent to validate that this is something that's gonna be effective. When you said uh, lots of times if a person has just been diagnosed with cancer, the best time to be part of a clinical trial is right after that diagnosis, before any treatment can begin. But I would have to imagine, isn't that something (laughs) a little troubling for the patient? Does that affect how they are treated for their cancer? Yeah, so when I'm talking with someone, um, the best time to look for clinical trial information is when you're newly diagnosed. But the, the most important thing is that a patient knows what their treatment options are, knows that their clinical trial opportunities to participate. And another thing that's starting to be part of the conversation is would there be benefit in having genomic testing done? Mm -hmm. So it's having a healthcare provider that's looking at the full picture and exploring all of those options that they're on the table. So uh, explain that to me again. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, what you're saying is that it's important to know about the clinical trials that have to do with your disease early on. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't it make sense to do the standard treatment first and then if that wasn't as effective as it could have been then to consider a clinical trial? It all depends on the patient's situation. So that what one of the things that I talk about is that Clinical trial information needs to be part of the conversation. And it may even, not be... And even early on. Early on. 
Yeah, so even if someone may not potentially be eligible for participating in a study, they need to know that at any time in their journey, they can look for that type of information. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're automatically going to choose to participate, but let's bring it up at the very beginning so that let's say someone is midway through their journey and all of a sudden that phrase clinical trial comes up, there may be a lot of fear, a lot of apprehension of participating. And there are times when people will believe that that's a last um, hope for someone when clinical trials are brought up, and that's not necessarily so. Um, there may be studies where you are participating upon um, uh, for first initial treatment, but mm. it depends on the patient's situation. And how do you find a clinical trial for your specific diagnosis? I mean, is it usually a physician will say, oh, and you know what, I'm interested in research, and I happen to know that there's a clinical trial going on for this, or do patients come and say, I'd like to know more about it? It's a combination. Um, so we are very fortunate at Mayo Clinic that a lot of our physicians are actively involved in research and that there's um, conversations that are going on between all three of our Mayo sites and our Mayo Health System sites now. Um, but patients, sometimes they are struggling to find that information. Um, probably the most um, comprehensive website for clinical trial information is our National Institutes of Health website. It's known as clinicaltrials.gov. And if I was going to choose one website to look for that information, that's where I'd go. But if people want help looking for clinical trial information, I would always suggest have that conversation with your healthcare provider, your physician, your nurse practitioner, your physician assistant, whatever provider you may be meeting with. Um, but then also connecting with a disease specific organization. And the benefit of connecting with a disease specific group is that they may be up to date on the latest research and resources, and they may be able to help patients with quite a variety of information. But you need reliable resources. All right, so it's clinicaltrials.gov if you mm -hmm. want to look up specific clinical trials related to your uh, disease. Mm -hmm. Now, I assume that all of the patients that you see are referred to you by a physician or a provider at the Mayo Clinic. You don't see patients that uh, might come to the Mayo Clinic and just want to see you about a clinical trial, right? So the majority of people that we talk to in the clinical trial referral office, um, they are finding information on the Mayo Clinic website, so mayoclinic.org. Okay. And the majority of people have never been to Mayo Clinic. So if someone is interested in clinical trial information and they would like Mayo to help them find that information, we do have the Research Information Center. We have a toll-free phone number, and we also have the Mayo Clinic Cancer Center Clinical Trials Referral Office with a toll-free phone number. And you can find that on the mayoclinic.org website. Um, and we are glad to talk with anyone around the world who's looking for information, resources, and again, we're glad to be of assistance. What else do you want our listeners to know about the importance of clinical trials and why it should be on your radar? Mm -hmm. So the easiest way for someone to participate in clinical research is to give permission for your medical records to be reviewed. And that is something that we learn a tremendous amount from chart review studies. Mm -hmm. And an example is um, we had a uh, chart review study for people that had been diagnosed with a type of leukemia. And what was learned is that um, patients that had a low vitamin D level may not have had, um, I believe it was the a longer survival rate than mm -hmm. someone that had a normal vitamin D level. So we can learn a lot from chart review studies and giving permission to have your medical records reviewed. And lots of times those chart review studies are helping us develop additional research um, topics that come up. And now we've got a very large study for blood cancers on um, checking someone's vitamin D level and seeing if we can correct that prior to mm -hmm. starting treatment. Well, so if you want more information, mayoclinic.org is a place to start, or clinicaltrials.org. And how do you get to the Research Information Center on the Mayo website? Yep, so it'd be clinicaltrials.gov, okay. and that's the Sorry. National Institutes of Health website, and then mayoclinic.org. And okay. Then yeah. go to Research Information Center. So you can um, find a, a tab on the mayoclinic.org website. It's a research, and okay. then... When you click on that, there'll be a, a tab for find clinical trials and all of our contact information, along with a very um, well-designed video that gives you an overview of what is clinical research. All right, perfect. Clinical Trials Referral Coordinator, Tony Mangskow. Thanks so much for being with us. I appreciate this. Thank you so much.